In this lesson, we're going to find a different way of solving systems of equations, and that is by using a tool called the matrix. Now, a matrix is a rectangular array of numbers. Usually, it's displayed with brackets on the end to help to group it. Matrices are identified by their size, and the size is indicated by the number of rows and then the number of columns. So the matrix that you see here, if we were to call it matrix A, would be a 2 by 3 matrix. That indicates that there's two rows and three, matrices, uh, three columns in the matrix. Now when we start talking about the elements inside of the matrix, those are the individual entries in each row and column. A matrix is identified with a capital letter and the elements are identified by lowercase. So if I wanted to know what element A13 was, what I would do is I would look at matrix A, find the first row and third column of that, and that is element number 1. If I wanted to know what element A21 was, then again I would find matrix A, second row, first column, and it would be the number 6. And we can continue to work with this. Now matrices can be as large as we need or as small. And a lot of matrices are square matrices. So we would have 5, 6, 2, 1, same number of rows and columns. When we have a matrix, as what we started out with, that has one extra column than row, that is called an augmented matrix. Sometimes you will see an augmented matrix with a dotted or solid vertical line separating off the square matrix from what has been added on or augmented into it. But those items will come and go depending on its usage. What we have with matrices is a quicker way of solving systems of equations. And we'll start to take a look at how that works. If we were to take a system of equations, such as what is shown in the upper left-hand corner here, we can rewrite this into a matrix by simply taking the coefficients for each element. So we have negative 4x minus 2y equals 7, and 3x plus y equals negative 5. If we take only the coefficients, we would end up with negative 4, negative 2, 7, 3, 1. Remember, when we see plus y, it is plus 1y, negative 5. This would be a matrix equivalent to the system of equations that was shown. Every item has to be accounted for, and it has to be set in a standard form with all your variables on one side and your constants on the other. So let's take a look at the black system of equations in the upper right-hand corner, and let's take a look at what it involves as a matrix. So our first line is just fine. We have 4, negative 1, 2, 1. Next row starts to pose a little bit of a problem. We have no x element. So how do we account for that in the matrix? We simply put a 0 where the x's would be. And it's 1, 5, and 20. In our third equation, we have an x. It is 2. But our y is on the other side of the equal sign. So how do we move a negative y from the right-hand side of the equal sign to the left? We add 1. So we'd end up with 1y. And then, how many z's do we have? That is 0, with a 7 as the constant. So we take a square matrix, three rows, three columns. Each column represents a different variable, each row a different equation. And we augment it with what each equation is equal to. What happens when we're given an equation, or a matrix, like this third one, and we need to write it into an equation? Well, simple. We assign variables to the columns, 
So we'll call this x and y. It doesn't have to be. It could be a and b or m and n. And we set up our dotted line for our augmentation. And then we simply rewrite it. We have 2x equals 6, because there's no y. And 5x minus 2y equals 1. So we're able to move back and forth between a matrix and a system of equations either direction. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how we can use this in solving systems of equations and that is through the practice of row operations. There are several operations that can be done when working with a matrix. The first is we can switch rows. So if we were to take this first matrix and swap rows 1 and 2, law of times that is row 1, row 2, traded back and forth to show a swap and what we would end up with is 3, 2, 5, 2, negative 1, 3 as our altered matrix. Second, we can multiply a row by a constant. So what we write is like 2 times row 2 becomes the new row 2. Now when we do that, we keep the first row the same then everything that's in the second row, we multiply by that constant, in this case 2. So we end up with 4, negative 2, 6. And last, we can add one row to another. So if I go row 1 plus row 2, I'm going to make that be the new row 1. What I end up with is 7, 0, 11, 4, negative 2, 6. So I only change one row at a time. The exception to that is if we were to have to swap a pair of rows, we'd move both. So how can we use these operations to solve a matrix or a system of equations? First, take our system of equations, like what's shown in the lower left-hand corner, and rewrite as a matrix. We have 1, 3, 5, 1, 4, 6. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take row 1 and swap it with row 2. Then I have the matrix 1, 4, 6, 1, 3, 5. Second, I'm going to take row 2 and subtract row 1 and make that be the next new row 2. What I end up with is 1, 4, 6, 0, negative 1, negative 1. What I'm trying to do is make a matrix that has the appearance of this with some sort of augmentation. And I'll explain why when we are finished. So I'm getting close to that in my matrix that is shown. Next, what I will do is I'll take row 2 and multiply it by negative 1 and make that the new row 2. So I have 1, 4, 6, 0, 1, 1. Next, I will go 4 times row 2 and, sorry, I'll go row 1 minus 4 times row 2 and make that the new row 1. And what we end up with is 1, 0, 2, 0, 1, 1. And we end up with an augmented matrix like this. What we have done is basically solved a system of equations without having to write the variables. And each row represents a solution. So since our first column was x's, it means our x is equal to 2. Our second column was y, that means our second value, our y value is 1. So the solution, 1, 2, or sorry, 2, 1, is the solution to this system of equations and it will always work that way. 
Now this form, as you see it, is called reduced row echelon form. Commonly that is abbreviated R-R-E-F. And in reduced row echelon form, it solves systems of equations for us. Now we can use our technology in order to speed up this process. Depending on your calculator model, the software included on it, and your familiarity with how it works, you are able to enter matrices in different methods. One method is you have a squared bracket. If you double enter a square and then place elements such as 1, 3, 5, followed by closing that square bracket and opening a second one, then going 1, 4, 6, each single bracket represents a row. The double bracket represents the beginning or end of a matrix. So if you took this and stored it in your matrix menu as matrix A, what your calculator would return is a matrix 1, 3, 5, 1, 4, 6, which is the matrix that we just solved. Next, in your matrix menu, you'll have some calculations available. One of those will be RREF, reduced row echelon form, and it opens a parenthesis for you normally. You then enter matrix A that you solved it as and hit enter, and it will return for you the solution matrix of that set that you were just working with, which was 102011. So we can use technology to speed up this process, but each calculator, each form is a little bit different. And if you have questions, you can refer to your calculator tech manual or ask your teacher in class. So matrices can speed this up, but doesn't replace being able to solve by hand because you don't always have the availability to use matrices or the tech to assist you. So make sure you understand this basic introduction to matrices. We might have time later on to do a more extensive study.